Hey, the word of the day, man, is respect. If you don't got respect, you don't have nothing in this game, man. Respect, you can't buy it. I can't assign you respect. You got to earn it. You got to earn it. You want your name on the back of this jersey to mean something, you got to earn that respect. You want these colors, these jerseys to mean something, you got to earn that respect. Snap in, snap down. Every single time you step on this field, man. Listen up, listen up, listen up, all my Central New Yorkers and yes, live sir. stream listeners. You are listening to WSUC 90.5 FM, The Dragon. This is The Huddle with The Real Lil and myself, Kenny C. We will have what a it do, guest. What it do, what it we do, what it do. We will have a guest, Anthony, coming in soon, about oh, 6.05 yeah. or so. But, Lil, what's going on? Man, I'm just over here ready to get this show on the road. We are back. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> All right, Central New Yorkers, we back, we live, and we ready to get inside the huddle, ladies and gentlemen. So, can you see what do we got on the agenda for today? All right, Lil, to start it off, everybody out there listening to the huddle, we, have, we will start with Manny Machado signing his big deal, and we will go into a little bit about that, then Colin Kaepernick and his collision settlement. After that, we will go into the Duke and NC game, and then it'll be halftime, or actually we will go over Antonio Brown and what's the best landing spot, then we go into halftime, and we'll tell you guys more about what we have in store when we get to it, but Lil, let's start it off with the Machado. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Manny Machado and the San Diego Padres reaches a 10-year, yes, I, I didn't make a mistake, a 10-year $300 million deal. Did the Padres offer this brother too much? I mean, looking at this deal, $300 million, it took this cat 113 days to come to the decision and finally gets a deal. Honestly, like I said last show, Lil, I feel like Harper and Machado are acting like divas. They were, you know, waiting and holding out for as much money as possible. And then you got to look at it. Yes, he had great stats. You know, a 297 batting average, 37 home runs, 5.7 war, which for most people who don't know what that stat is, war is basically the overall estimate of a player's value and contribution to the team. So to have a 5.7, that's pretty solid. But in all honesty, I feel like Machado got paid and he already said he wasn't Johnny Hustle. So I feel like he's going to slack off even more. And, you know, it could go two ways. He could earn his money, earn his keep, earn what he waited, you know, and held out for to earn. Or he could get paid and just relax and let the rest of the team do the work and not put in as much effort. I would say this. This brother's stat, Manny Machado, all right? Mm -hmm. First of all, let's start off with the Padres stats. Mm -hmm. the, this team has missed the playoffs 12 straight years. Yes, sir. They've been on vacation for 12 straight years. Their fans have been miserable for 12 straight years. It's been 12 straight years of heartache and pain. Sounds familiar? If you're a New York Knicks fan, it sounds that familiar. That is a fact. 37 home runs last season for Manny Machado. Yep. I RPI of 107. Mm -hmm. And I believe, you know, yes, the talent is there. Yes, we all know he deserved to break the bank. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe in giving players a 10-year deal. I do not. All right? I believe that giving a contract this long is shady. Mm -hmm. You offering these long contracts because, you know, you expect the player to show up. But what if players regress? That's what if what Manny saying. Chato, halfway through the deal, start regressing? And he, he can't do what we know him to do. What if he falls down a flight of steps on his way to wherever and he it's tears true. his leg up? It's true. Mommy or John Wall falls down, tears his leg up at in his home, house. in his house. What happens if that's the case and he can't play again? You know what I'm saying? You know, so I, I'm not in favor of that. that I definitely years. agree with that. And, you know, for 10 years and $300 million, I mean, that's a little excessive. You know, yes, this guy has his resume and... He is a great player. Overall, I think, you know, the Padres, they're on the rise. You know, not many people know they have one of the best farm systems in baseball. And just to look at their infielding lineup now with Machado, you know, they're moving to Machado from third base, which he's always kind of played, and he played a little shortstop, but now they're putting a primarily shortstop. 
And then they have Ty France at third base with Ian Kinsler, who's proven that he's a great player at second base, Eric Hosmer at first base, and Francisco Mieja at catcher. They'll be pretty solid, you know, on paper, but we have to see what they're going to do together as a collective team. And overall, you know, the Dodgers last year, they acquired Machado just to, you know, have him as an asset for the playoff run. He really didn't do too much, too much standout, you know, performance for the Dodgers in the playoffs. In 16 games, you know, he had a 227 batting average, which is decent, and only three home runs. So he really didn't contribute that much to the Dodgers run in the playoffs. But, I mean, hey, it's a new new home and a new hope, I guess. So we'll have to see what he can do in San Diego. But I definitely agree, Lil. <laughs> Listen, man. Too long for I'm this just, man. I'm just not feeling that 10-year part of the no. deal. You know what I'm saying? If he breaks the record for us, because this is the, what, the largest free agent yeah. contract in, in history. In American sports in history. In American sports history. All right, I can understand that part. But the 10-year deal, I'm not I'm not with that because, like I said, no. you don't know what can happen in the next 10 years. We might not even be in this earth in the next 10 years. So <laughs> it might be a daggone zombie apocalypse in the next 10 years. <laughs> so you giving this guy... A 10-year contract is, is unbelievable. But I tell you one thing, Kenny C. One thing he could buy, he could buy himself a nice car. He True. could buy himself some wives. True. He could buy himself some knives. He could buy himself a house and a mouse. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what he, else he could buy? He, he could, could buy, buy himself a nice new freezer. Can I hear that beat? Uh, I see Man, you, he's like channel see living. See he's living right now. I see you, He's man. living. Facts, but listen, the White Sox missed out. They missed out, oh, my they opinion. Did. They missed out. They had a perfect opportunity to get him, and they missed out. The Yankees, not so much. The Yankees, like we said last yeah, week, they're, they're they, didn't really, they didn't need him. They already stacked. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't even need Drew Stanton. Mm -hmm. And we still got Drew Stanton, and, and you know what he brings to the table once he oh, yeah, gets 100%. settled in. So, you know, a lot of teams, in my opinion, missed out. But what this does do, I think Bryce Harper should be happy. That this happened oh, because no, 100%. now expect 100%. him to get a deal similar. Oh yeah, that's, to what Manny that's exactly what these two, the, what these two guys were doing. One of them was gonna sign, and the other was gonna look at the deal and say, "All right, I'm trying to match something similar to that. If you don't give me that, then I'm moving on." And actually, the White Sox, like you just said, they missed out on Machado. And I just got a notification from Bleach Report like a couple minutes ago that they're not even gonna make a bid for Bryce Harper. So the White Sox missed out completely in this. Overall, I mean, yeah, you could say they missed out, but did they really have that much money to spend on these type of guys? Yeah. So, so. you know, if I'm Bryce Harper, I'm calling Manny Machado. Like, congratulations on your deal, brother. Mm -hmm. Thank you for setting me up because I'm pretty sure Bryce Harper is going to get him a nice, fancy deal in which he's going to be able to get himself the same thing Manny Machado is going to be able to get himself, mm -hmm. which is 100%. a nice life. All right, a nice life with that money. But when we come back from a very, very, very quick commercial break, because our guests just walked up in the building, we're going to get right back at it. 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819 is the number that you're going to call to get in yes, the sir. huddle. Okay, Central New York, we are back. We are back. And I promise y'all it's going to be a very short commercial break. And you know one thing about Real Lil, I keep my promises. That's one thing Keeping I do. Keeping it real. Keeping it real. Y'all know how it is. And we got our famous guest on the show, Anthony. He also had a sports show over here. And he's going to get his sports show back. So, you know, he's hanging out with us. You know, we out here. We was just talking about Manny Machado and the record deal that this brother got. Ten years, $300 million. But what are your thoughts on a deal? Did you think... Um, the Padres went overboard with this deal, or does Manny Machado deserve every bit of the penny in the long-term contract that he's getting? I think it's uh, it's pretty clear uh, the Padres, that their attendance and the team, they needed something to boost them up. And Machado does it. Does it necessarily bring in fans? I don't know. I saw them talking about it on ESPN the other day. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to necessarily bring in fans. I mean, how much star power is on that team? Uh, did he make the right choice picking them over the White Sox? And it, the money, <laughs> I mean, listen, he had you turned down $300 million. Yeah. Ten years, I heard you talking before. Who are going to live in ten years? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? I, I just thought, crazy, that's the part man. I don't understand. Ten years? I mean, you could slip on a ice and break your leg. 
it's wild. And, and you look at the Bryce Harper and what he's looking at, and it just set him up. You're exactly right yeah. on that. He's looking at big money. He might even thank yeah. him, too. I think that's really all I have on it. I mean, 10 years, 300 million. Nuts. That's Absolutely insane. insane. That, that's what I'm saying. I'm look, just... look what other players on the sports are getting. I mean, what's the NFL doing? they got to figure out oh, their... Uh, the player union's got to figure out their situation. It's Yo, it, it's ridiculous. crazy how the NFL, which is a much violent sport, I nice. mean, CTEs all over the place. You could be a fan in the stands mm -hmm. get injured. Why? I mean, it's a wild sport, and they get paid less. Yeah, out and, of all sports. And in, in basketball, you got Supermax, $230 million that these players are turning down, by the way, because they know damn well they can get that number again at mm -hmm. some point. And it's just crazy. The NFL definitely they stepped their game up because baseball, football, you know, why would I don't – this brings up the question now. With Kyler Murray, too, who mm -hmm. has a choice of playing football and baseball. Mm -hmm. And now you see Manny Machado getting that 10-year, $300 million deal. And if I'm Kyler Murray, I'm over here scratching my hand a little bit. Well, you look at Kyler Murray, he's he's getting guaranteed money right when he hits the NFL. So he's that getting drafted, true. he's getting that signing bonus, boom, you're already a millionaire. Uh, mm -hmm. The, the um, MLB, he would have to work his way up, obviously. And oh, obviously we know about that. Yeah. It would be a little longer mm -hmm. of a process. But when I think yeah. about it, you know, it, it would be a longer process. That yeah. That is factual. Mm -hmm. But when he gets there, he can definitely break the bank. Yeah. Oh, no, without a doubt. But, like, in the NFL, I, I think of the longevity. Yeah, I know. The danger I feel of the like, sport. I feel like if you really look at, like, the player average, I'm pretty sure it's only, like, five years in the NFL yeah. for a player to last. So, you know, unless he comes out and he's, like, a big superstar type player and he does ball out, and he earns his paycheck. I feel like, I feel like baseball, it could have been a much better option for him because, like we were saying, it's way you get paid way less in football compared yeah. to other sports. So I mean, if I was Murray, it's still it'll still be solid because, like you said, Anthony, he'll get paid immediately with his deal. But in terms of health, I don't know. Yeah. It's and risky. The it's risky. Is, is a big factor. And then the athletics say that they was going to match the NFL's offer. I think I heard something like that, that they were going to match oh, really? the offer that the NFL is giving to make sure Kyler Murray stays out that draft. Wow, wow. So we'll see. I mean, if they do do that, and I'm Kyler Murray, I think baseball is the best way to go. Oh, yeah. But if they don't do that, then obviously you go football, you take the money up front, and like he said, bang, bang, you're already a, you're already a millionaire. I mean, yeah, and, and depending on where he gets drafted yeah. in terms of football, like he could be a guaranteed starter on a team. Well, he, he's already made the full commitment, right? He already mm -hmm. has. He, yeah. he's, gonna, he's committed to the combine coming up and training mm -hmm. towards that. Uh, so, I mean, Kyler Murray, it, it depends on where he's getting drafted. They're saying top ten. Obviously, the combine, I don't know if he's going to say he's not going to. He doesn't know if he's going to. Oh, wow. in the combine. That's big. Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. I heard that today too. He, says he, he said he don't know if he's doing or not. being undersized and all, you know, who knows what his vertical exactly. jump is and stuff like that. Exactly. Exactly. So, it could have hurt him though, you know. It could. It could. He might be better off not doing a combine. That's true. That's true. I was watching. I saw. Did you see that he did a Dan Patrick? He went on the Dan Patrick show. Oh really? Do. It's not good. Not a good look for oh, him. Jeez. I mean, he, he wasn't prepared for these questions that were asked to him about whether he was going to play football or baseball. It was just kind of silence. See, that's yeah. that's when that's like a red flag right there. Because yes, he has great talent and he's a great athlete. But if he's still conflicted in his head of where he truly wants to commit to, that's like a red flag for a team. Like you want his head fully in the game, depending on you know obviously which whichever sport it is. If it's football, which he said he's committed to. The team wants him focused on football, not questioning of, oh, maybe I should go to the MLB. Exactly. You know. And I'm not, I'm not gonna feel sorry for the brother, cause at the end of the day, oh, I yeah. mean, that that that's an issue that I would love to have. I mean, there's some people <laughs> yeah. that can't even get drafted by minor league or or can't even make their local baseball yeah, yeah. team on the in, right. in the park. Mm -hmm. So he got the best of both worlds. But what I would say is this: I personally, I could throw a hot take out here on the show right now, a nice. Hot take, you 17 hear minutes in the, Let's hear in the it show. Right now. I think the Arizona Cardinals Ooh. is going to trade Josh Rosen <laughs> and draft Kyler Murray. Wow. And you know bold, why? Bold because of Cliff Kingsbury and his air raid system that he runs, I believe Kyler Murray fits that system best. That's why I'm throwing that hot take out there. Where are you throwing Rosen? Where do you think Rosen will end up? I don't know, but I think the Cardinals will trade him. <laughs> I feel that like... Would, yeah. 
I mean, no, you can go ahead. That would be wild if that happened. I mean, you look at teams who need a quarterback, uh, the Giants. Oh, uh, look man. at them. They don't know what they're – I think Eli Manning, if I'm a betting man, he's going to be the quarterback in 2019. He's on the Just based off experience. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they need a quarterback. You look at Dwayne Haskins. Or yeah. They're, they're not a big fan of Kyler Murray. They're Dave not. Gettleman's already said mm -hmm. he wants a taller quarterback. Exactly. Yeah. And if someone grabs Haskins, the Jacks move in front of them, and, and, the, and Kyler Murray's on the table for the Cardinals, who knows? You heard um, I'm choking up here. It's getting hot in this booth. <laughs> it's too hot but, to take. Word. <laughs> but, you know, there was a, a report, you know, from Colin Cowherd on his show that Russell Wilson mm. actually wants out of Seattle and wants to play for the Giants. Wow. Yeah. This is last year of his contract coming up. So if that I'm the Giants big. and I hear this, I want to know y'all opinion. Do I take that rumor and run with it, or do I draft a quarterback in Dwayne Haskins, and if Russell Wilson wants to come, we'll let them battle it out. Like, how does okay. that work? Honestly, if you're going to go off rumors, you know, obviously, like you said, Lil, that's a rumor. The that's team, the Giants need to contact Russell and his agent, you know, off the bat. They can't be going off rumors, because if you mess up your draft, and, you know, you miss out on a top prospect that could have been the leader of your franchise in the future, all based off a rumor, that's not, in my opinion, exactly. that's not a solid decision. I totally agree. This Russell again? Wilson rumor uh, that Colin Coward said, I mean, I don't know how, you know, trustworthy this is. Uh, he's pretty good. He's, he's pretty, pretty good. good. He's no, pretty he, good with reliable. He's, a pretty, he's, he's reliable. A pretty reliable. Unlike journalist. a lot of yeah, people yeah. who... They sources, I don't know where they get their sources from. It might be Wikipedia. He but, doesn't yeah. throw clickbait out there for sure. But mm -hmm. um, if this is true, <laughs> and you, the Giants know this, I mean, you got to go out and, and try and at least yeah. see. Uh, they're oh, saying yeah. the main thing was his wife, Ciara, yeah, Ciara. who is a, Ciara. Who's a, uh -huh. who's a, who's a singer, <laughs> and she said that New York's a better market for her. Wow. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if Russell Wilson's that much of a gentleman where he'd uh, true. switch cities yeah. to play. I mean, he's loves Seattle. I, He's Not the type yet. of guy I wouldn't just see uh, hopping ships like that. I could mm -hmm. see him, you know, ending with Seattle. Oh, I definitely you know? agree. But, you know, it's Seattle, man. I, I mean, feel that's like... enough to make you jump two <laughs> chips. It's true, I mean. Leo, but I feel like if he did decide to make the move to go to the New York Giants, he definitely has to pay homage to Seattle and, you know, oh, yeah. pay his respects and do it in a proper way, not like Antonio Brown. Oh, oh no. Completely that's ruin his legacy story. with that's them. That's another story. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But that, that team is in ruins right yeah. now, it looks it like. really is. Him and Le'Veon. Le'Veon's yeah. a free man now. He oh, can do man. what he wants. We'll see where he we'll goes. We'll definitely talk but, about that. Oh, for sure. So, moving on here. The next topic. The next controversial. Headline. Another headline. You know, we got our two headlines to start the show. Obviously, the Manny Machado, we just dived into that. The next big headline on this show is the Colin Kaepernick and the NFL reaching this settlement. Does this make... Everything that we thought about Kaepernick, just a, 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 a frenzy. D does this make Kaepernick a sellout? Him taking the money, and in the now that he took the money, he can't say nothing about what the mm -hmm. negotiation was. So we don't even know what the NFL did. I mean, obviously, from a, you know, from a perspective, we, we understand that he was blackballed. Mm -hmm. But based on him not being able to talk about it, we won't know... We won't see the NFL embarrassed. So it's almost like the NFL got away you know, with it. It's like, does this make Colin Kaepernick a sellout? Or is it, you know, it's money. He provides I mean, for himself and his family. I was just about to say, Leo, like, you know, you said we don't know what the NFL did. The NFL, what they did was offer this man lifetime millions. I think it was like 60 to $80 million off the agreement that he made. I'm pretty sure that's what it was, you know, I could be wrong, but Ant, if you could find that. I'm trying to find it. I mean, that... But, you know, that's that right there is like... But I mean, I'll, he, shut my mouth up, I'll shut my mouth up for 60 to $80 million, if, Listen, if you ask no, me. There's no doubt that Colin Kaepernick, you look at the quarterback starting, and you look at Nathan Peterman. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. my God. And you Mark Sanchez. Mark Sanchez. You could, go on and, man. you could go on and on with this list of quarterbacks and <laughs> make an argument for Colin Kaepernick should have been hired by an NFL team. Oh, now, yeah. in terms of his cause and in terms of the settlement, I'm not going to blame a man for taking no, you know, yeah. 60 to $80 million. Did it kind of NFL with a... You know, what is that to the NFL, though? 60 to $80 million? True. That's did, like pocket did, change. Was it almost like the NFL did when, like Leo just said, 
And I do think they that kind of mm -hmm. slipped under the rug. Yeah, they kind of shut them up. They kind of shut them up. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of over with. Now. Basically, but, but then again, in my opinion, yeah, I'm conflicted with this because mm -hmm. I respect everything that Colin Kaepernick stood for mm -hmm. and why he took his knee. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it's basically like everything that else, everything else that goes on in America. We give you money, and you shut, shut up, up. Exactly. and do what we tell you to do, which is another form of selling out. Because that's oh, what yeah. these play celebrities and all <laughs> these entertainers do is, is we give you money, mm -hmm. we give you millions, zip it, and do what we tell you to do. So this is basically the same thing. So I don't see how this is not a form of selling out mm -hmm. in a way because it's basically the same thing. Yes, he brought the light to the attention where it was needed. But now that you got everybody on board, you still got to drive the ship. Mm -hmm. If you're not driving a ship no more, then we stuck on the coast. Mm -hmm. So that's how I feel about it. it was, I'm disappointed. Honestly, I mean, I, I, I know he wanted to provide for his family, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy that he got money. He could be able to do that, mm -hmm. but still, like, you know, we don't get to see the NFL embarrassed. We don't play this out to the end. And yeah, the NFL, you made a fool out yourself. You know, I feel like the NFL is just such a big corporation, and it's just a, such a big part of of America, like. Football is just, I feel like in past years it's become like America's pastime over baseball in terms of, you know, views and stuff. But honestly, Leo, I definitely agree. Like, I feel like he did sell out because, you know, like we said with the whole, you know, kneeling thing, he brought a pedestal to an issue that, you know, he felt really needed to be put in the public eye, which I believe it did with, you know, police brutality. And, and I respect that. You know, the aspect. whole racial discrimination. And yes, I definitely respect his views and stuff. But yes, Leo, I feel like he already probably made millions off Nike endorsing him. So right. did he really need this extra money? I feel like you are right. He should have stood for he what he stood for. He should have stood for what he stood for. And even Eric Reed sold out. Because mm. guess yeah. what? He's playing in the football league again on the Carolina Panthers. Mm -hmm. So basically... The, with the you know what's the meaning of selling out you know what i'm saying what is that meaning so they you know as much as i like i said i respect kaepernick i'm not going to say you know he's a bum he's the enemy da 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 i respect what he did i just personally wanted to see him carry it further because you started something you got the whole world on notice the nfl's ratings in the super has been the lowest as it has been in the last 10 years yeah. so you got everybody on notice any quarterback that goes down Kaepernick names is is always going to be up, so you just got the you got the whole world on a pedestal. You had the NFL on a pedestal. I just wanted him to see him follow through with that. I like how you said the entertainment industry, and you know these higher authorities. Mm -hmm. You see it in hip hop too. You yeah. see it everywhere. You know now look at hip hop now. I mean you make money off these songs that you know. I mean yeah, I don't even know what the hell they say. What exactly. are they saying? I mean, talking about things I mean, that are unrealistic and to people who really need these songs. And like actually, some of these rappers, like. Young Thug. Get the thing, get the thing, get the thing, get the thing. It's the same thing, it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, what? It's wow. ridiculous. But going back to the Kaepernick thing, uh, people and NFL owners, and you can talk about owners in NBA and, and all these higher authority, they don't like when players speak out. It's not no, the norm. Yeah. It's, not, it's not what's going to make them money. It mm -hmm. may be what's right for the NFL and players and what they believe in, but... I mean, you look at LeBron, you know, the whole shut up and dribble thing. Yeah. That's yeah. a perfect example of it. Yeah. And you look at Kaepernick and the NFL, the NFL owners, it just didn't turn out well, the whole kneeling thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of Kaepernick, he raised awareness to a cause that he believed in, and mm -hmm. that was great. Exactly. But him kind of selling out here and taking a settlement, it could have been he had a good opportunity here to really do something great. I'm not saying he didn't. What I'm saying is, you know, the owners at the end are happy that it's over and it's not what should have happened. Exactly, you know, like the point that you just brought up with the shut up and dribble. Even when LeBron James posted that video on Instagram of him saying, I'm getting that Jewish money, we saw all the backlash. Mm -hmm. What is wrong with that statement, in my opinion? He's not coming at the Jews, in my opinion. He's saying, I'm getting that Jewish money. Well, I don't find nothing wrong I with mean, that statement. You know, people could, I guess, take it offensive because you're implying automatically that I guess Jew, all Jews have money in a way. I mean, they're the ones that run the money system out you here. Know, so, I mean... I mean <laughs> I'm not going to disagree, but I'm just saying, like, you know, that could be a case for the other side. You know, you know how it is nowadays. Everybody needs everything to be politically correct 
and everybody's sensitive. This generation is soft. People it's don't really know. People don't know how to. It's really what it is. How to take people's opinions and you know actually understand people's opinions. Everybody want to be right. You know you're wrong. Oh, you know this and that. It's just a whole bunch of stuff going on. And when you have these transcendent plays that bring lights, bring you know to the light these things that's going on. You know I respect that. But when you start a, a, a revolution like what Kaepernick did, do you realize what Kaepernick did? Yeah, All right, true. a sport like the NFL, mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta continue with that. You cannot let money shut you up, especially when you came out like that. You know what I'm saying? When you and came he already out, he has that. millions of dollars. Exactly. You know Man, I mean? it was in a Super Bowl. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Man's like, play. He's been there. He's done. So it. you know, money is not his issue. But if he allows money to talk him up. It's like, yo, we'll give you fifty million dollars. We're tired of you. You're ruining mm -hmm. our league. There is something, in my you opinion, know, called the Kaepernick curse because the league has been going down ever since Kaepernick has not been in the league. The league has been going down. Ratings, quarterbacks, been going down at an alarming rate. The last couple of years, I never seen quarterbacks go down like this. So I feel like there's a Kaepernick curse, and, I, and the NFL is just tired of it. You know, you know players don't want to perform at halftime. None of that. You know, performances. They're like, listen, let's let's shut you up, please. Here's this money. Be quiet. Leave us alone. Let us breathe. I kind of want to raise a new question for you guys. So, you know, being as, you know, Kaepernick used the anthem as his, you know, pedestal to promote what he, you know, believes is right and fought for what he believed in. If Kaepernick had continued to play in the NFL and maybe used a different pedestal to promote what he believed in, do you believe all this still would have happened and the NFL still would have tried to shut him up for believing in what he believed in? You're, saying, got, if it, you're it, saying if it wasn't the anthem? Like he yeah, like if he used pedestal. a different pedestal. He didn't kneel for the anthem. He used, I don't I even think, know, whatever, commercials or something else to try to promote I think it. think if you he think it would have happened still? I think if he used a different platform, if he did something different, saying. it would have had got the light of day that what oh, yeah, doing yeah. that at the anthem yeah, got. that's true. So when you do stuff that's like that, true. You bring awareness now. You got the whole world's attention, whether it's negative or positive. You generate mm -hmm. attention. That's mm -hmm. like the civil rights, you know, movements back in the day. You had to get that attention. You had to get that media conglomerate actually covering it. Mm -hmm. You know, you going by the street wearing a hoodie is not going to get no attention. Mm -hmm. But you going on a national base with national television and you sitting down on that bench while the national anthem is being sung... That's going to get attention. Oh, yeah, I, I agree with that. It's controversial. It's no, it's controversial for sure. Mm -hmm. And he stood up for something he believed in, and I agree. It wouldn't have got the day of light if he would have done some commercial. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would have got recognition, no doubt. But how long? I mean, you looked at all the players who rallied behind him. Mm -hmm. I mean, you had teams uh, on oh, the side. True. Whole teams mm -hmm. kneeling. The Steelers that's, didn't that's even come impact. out. The yeah, Steelers didn't come point. out. So, and it, it kind of strung the hearts of people. They were divided. Some people who loved the anthem said, well, this is our anthem and you're standing for it. Have show mm -hmm. respect to our troops. He said, you know, it's a di for a different reason. He said, this mm -hmm. is my right to. So it, it caused a huge storm in the NFL. It was horrible for the NFL. And the NFL knew that. They were willing to do whatever to put this to bed. And it looks like they did. But I hope Kaepernick does something else and keeps continuing his fight. Mm -hmm. It reminds me of... A movie. I'm trying to think of the movie at the top of my house. There's a movie called The Foreigner. There we go. That just came out with Jackie Chan. Mm -hmm. And in that movie, his daughter was killed by a bomber. You know, in Paris or whatever. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy, this agency person or FBI agent that Jackie Chan knew he knew answers to. But he never gave him answers. He was like, yo, they killed my daughter. I want some answers. So every day, Jackie Chan went... And, and, and set, you know, fake bombs around this guy's house to get him to give him answers. And that's kind of what happened with the NFL. You know, at the end of the movie, the guy gave in. All right, listen, I'm tired of it. Here's your answers. The NFL got tired of Kaepernick and all this things going on that's haunting the NFL. So they was like, you know, I'm tired. Here you go. Here your money. Be quiet. Leave us alone. I like that comparison, Lil, because that's definitely, you know, you're relating a sports issue to something like, you know, a movie. Which is definitely, that's definitely a valid comparison. And overall, in the end, I definitely agree with you. I feel like he did sell out. And, you know, I feel like he should have, you know, continued to fight for his right. Is there a question, though, like, does he want to still play football as bad as he used to? And I feel like that he made this agreement. Maybe it's from an athletic standpoint. He just wants to get back in the league and start playing again. But 
I mean, who knows? We'll see, we'll see. They said his agent said yeah. something about the Panthers and the Patriots as potential landing spots mm -hmm. for Colin Kaepernick. As you all know, his protest buddy, Eric Reed is on the Panthers. Mm -hmm. And the Panthers were the name, you know, for what they did. Yeah. We all know about the Black yeah, Panthers. Yeah, yeah. So I, I think that would make a lot of sense. Right it there. would be interesting. And does he come back and does he continue his protest maybe in a different way? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, ultimately, I think it depends on the team that signs him. Are they going to ask him? Are you going to kneel? And that's exactly like, what they're going to ask. Exactly mm -hmm. what they're going to. You're right. It's exactly what they're going to ask him. That's going to be the first thing they ask. Well, it ain't going to be. Can you, can you play good? Do you still got talent? Do you? They know he's it's going to be. Can but you kneel? Are you going to kneel? Didn't you say the agreement was he has to shut his mouth? Yeah, basically in that agreement. So, so if he does, you know continue to stand up for what he believes in and he kneels anyway, will he get in legal trouble in terms of getting I sued by so. the NFL? I believe so. Because that would be, you know, that's a crushing blow so. if they, and that's they take why, you to court. The NFL is looking for And that's some money. why I believe that he there's a possibility. Do I think he's going to play football again? No. Mm -hmm. But now that he's silenced, maybe I won't be surprised if a True. team that need a quarterback, all right, Colin Kaepernick is silenced now. He can't take a knee, otherwise he he's definitely going to take um, repercussions for mm -hmm. it. So now we can feel comfortable signing Kaepernick and won't have to deal with that outpour mm -hmm. that's going to come with it. Yeah. So moving on to the next topic. And before we do, the request line is 607-753-4819. Once again, 607-753-4819. It's approximately 634, and we're just getting started. Um, let's go on to the next topic over here. Hot topic. Which is Duke. <laughs> We're just getting started. Which is Duke. <laughs> you know, Zion Williamson, he's always that trending topic. You know, all the sports oh, yeah. shows, all the sports media shows, radio shows, whatever. And, you know, we're going to talk about him right now. We all know that Duke got decimated last night by oh, Carolina, 88-72. to A big upset. But more importantly, Zion Williamson makes an early exit after 36 seconds into the game, suffering a mild knee sprain. Um, how in concerned... His and his shoe busted right open. How concerned should we be with this injury? I mean, being that this man is a big man and he averages like 21.6 points per game, eight rebounds, two assists, <coughs> clearly, you know, Duke's number one guy and definitely made them the team that they are. I'm not saying, you know, R.J. Barrett and Reddish aren't great players, but Zion is definitely the guy that just has been annihilating players every game they play. So, honestly, I think this is a big loss for the team because we saw as soon as he went down, they started folding and they ended up getting blown out. So, we'll have to see what happens in the future. If I'm Duke, I'm concerned about my national championship mm -hmm. um, chances. If I'm Zion, I'm hanging up the shoes, well, throwing out the shoes, <laughs> and I'm going straight to the NBA draft because at this point, he, I forget, it was like an $8 million kicker if he gets in the wow. top 16 of the draft. Wow. And he obviously is. And oh, yeah. Praying I'm a Knicks fan. I hope yeah. he ends up in the Big Apple. Comes to New York. I'm praying for it. But yeah, definitely. Am I concerned about Zion's knee injury? Uh, you know, it's a mild knee sprain. If he tore it, I'd be more concerned. Mm -hmm. I think it's more a matter of Duke being concerned about their chances of winning going forward. If I'm Zion, I'm done for the year. I'm waiting for the draft. I would say this. Me, I'm more of the type of person, I love a team sport. I love a team game. I feel like the NBA has become so much, and it's not only the NBA. It's actually all sports, but I see it a lot in the NBA, that it just become so much individualized. Instead of team, oh, it's all about lives. me. Yeah. It's all about me. Ah, uh, like I said, it goes in all sports. Mm -hmm. But the NBA, NBA especially. obviously, yeah. especially. Oh yeah. And I believe, KD. you know, with Zion, you playing on Duke. <laughs> you know, you have a team that you done went through the ends of the earth with. If you feel like you can play, you play. Oh yeah. You play. You play that. this season. You try to win you a national championship because that should be your main focus. So you're for him playing. I'm for him playing, yeah. I would agree you with know, that, You know, you're on a team, you're playing team ball, you want to win a championship with your teammates, and then worry about the NBA draft. You know, when you start focusing on one thing, and you, you that's how you miss out on other things. When you're too busy focusing on what's ahead instead of what's coming next. And I just believe that as a team player, you know, because I'm all about team playing, you know. Mm -hmm. You play with a team, you're on my team. You know, me and Kenny C got a show. It's not all about me. You know it's it. not all about Kenny C. It's not all 
all team. about you. It's all about us. It's a team. We in the <laughs> huddle. The huddle, man. <laughs> exactly. So I believe that you know if if he can play, now if he can if he's hurt, that's mm-hmm. a different story, and he can't play. But if he can play, then I believe he should play, and I believe with him being there, it makes Duke chances way more better than when he's not there winning the national championship. I agree with the team aspect. I do. I think players, their natural mm-hmm. instinct is to listen. I want to play. Mm-hmm. I want to win a national chip. But how, when's the last time we've seen someone like Zion? I mean, yeah. Zion has That's always true. been, ever since he, since high school, into, the, into, the, into uh, college, it's always been Zion is bigger than college basketball. He is, this guy is a freak of nature. How tall is he? 6'7"? <laughs> What is, what is he, six, seven, yeah. 250, oh, 60? He's, he's, I mean, big. Like, it's when have we seen this size? I mean, the man is, he's so it's strong, ridiculous. he's ripping out of shoes. I mean, exactly. When's the, when's the last time we've seen this? And if you're Zion's, uh, was he an agent already? He definitely has. Yeah, he definitely has to have an agent. <laughs> yes, mm-hmm. His agent is definitely in his ear. He wants him to hang yeah. him up. But I, I mean, listen, I hope to see more of him because I love watching him play. But this man is a feature in the NBA. He's got a shoe deal waiting for him. He's oh, got yeah. a lot of things on the horizon. Is he bigger than this college basketball scene? I may honestly, and I definitely agree with that because, you know, honestly, if he, if he didn't have to play, if the one mm-hmm. and done rule, one and done rule wasn't in play, yeah, yeah, he would have went straight. Oh, to he would have already been school. gone. So mm-hmm. yeah, so now that this, now that this question arises, should he play or should he sit out? You know, maybe you're right. You know, he maybe he should sit out because if you sit out, whether you come back or not, you're a guaranteed first rounder. So without a doubt, you're going to get drafted. But if you do come back, you do run the risk of maybe re-injuring that knee. Who knows? I like the fact that we disagree because this is actually intended to be a debate show. Exactly. So yeah. my thing is, I listen, I'm team first. It's team first. That's what makes basketball. Oh, no, I it's, agree with it's that. It's a team. If he can play... Why would he sit out? You know where that eye. Right, so he sits out. Mm-hmm. What does that do for every player on the court? Knowing that their best player is not playing because he's worried about his stock in an NBA draft. What does that do to a team's psyche? What does that do to a team's um, conglomerate? All composure. that composure, all that. Knowing that your best player, who made you this much better, is not playing, not because he's not healthy, but because he's worried about his draft stock. I think that messes up Duke. I think that literally puts a stamp on them not winning the national championship. Because when he was not playing in this game, they they didn't didn't stand a chance. R.J. Barrett, even though he had a 32-point game, it was an ugly 32-point game. So I just believe that, you know, as a team, for a person. They need Zion. They need need Zion. Zion, And Zion, if he's available, he should be available. He's just got to worry about it. If he comes back and plays poorly, it hurts his draft stock for sure. Oh, yeah. I look at Michael Porter Jr. He, remember, he got yeah. a back injury in his first, mm-hmm. like, two minutes when he first... Yeah, he was going to be the number one pick. And then he comes back to the tournament, and Scott said he played awful. Yeah, in he one game, like he, he was supposed self. to be the number one pick. He'd hype going into the college basketball and comes out into the draft, and he's the 14th pick by the Nuggets. So he got, it, it sucks for these players that they have to go through that. Mm-hmm. But it is a part of the process, and you have to weigh all these options out. That's true. I do think his agent, like you said, is telling him set out. You know, but I, I feel I, like I feel like he will come back. There's something in me that's telling me he wants to. Come I mean, back if you're a competitor, support the team. If you're a competitor, mm-hmm. you know you want all the time you can get playing on the court mm-hmm. as a competitor. If I was a, which I am, a radio personality, which I am, mm-hmm. and my voice got messed up on one episode. And I got a big um, radio show coming up on in the W the fan the fan right mm-hmm. yeah. and I'm like you know what I'm not gonna mess my voice up no more because I'm 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 been losing my voice every episode and it got to a point where I gotta rest so I could get to that that big show that I got mm-hmm. but me loving what I do on the radio I'm gonna come back I'm gonna do these episodes. Get better, get as much better as I can, improve on my side, because I also got to improve. Mm-hmm. There's always room for improvement. By him being on the court, he can improve his game along with that. So I'm coming here on the radio, I'm improving my stock. And then I get to that point mm-hmm. where I'm like, all right, now we're going to the next level. That's what I think he should do. If he really loves the game of basketball, which I, so, which I do believe he do, he would want to play. He would want to 
bring a championship because that's what you play for the win championships and the going to each level that you can go to see but then you look at what we said before with you know the whole sports has become all about me me yeah. me individual you know He's probably... That's basically what it is. He's probably thinking more towards himself right now. Oh, definitely. How I'm going to get yeah. through this injury and where and will I go in the draft? And that's a know, shame. That's a shame. When will I get That picked? people, individuals, could be all about them. Even in high school basketball, you had that one guy that's the best player on the court. And these coaches don't even know their other players' names. Oh, They yeah. focus on this guy. 100%. You know, you got scouts visiting this guy. Mm -hmm. It's all about him. They point you out. I mean, look at look at Lonzo Ball and uh, yeah. his high school team. Chino oh, yeah. I mean, they, And Lonzo is a bust <laughs> right now. He is. Right now he's a bust. Yeah. D'Angelo Russell, D'Angelo Russell's playing way all better than him. him. He's balling out. D'Angelo Russell. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So that's how I, that's how I look at it. But, you know, to finish this topic out. Let's talk about Nike here, all right? With the Nike shoes, obviously, mm -hmm. that, you know, this brother busted busted. This through. man was wearing Payless. Is it? <laughs> I don't know if those were Nike. He was wearing some Nikes made I don't know where. <laughs> it, is it a problem? How does it make, like, Nike look? Is it a bad on Nike, or is it just like, yo, this guy is a freak of nature, and he ran through them shoes? Nah, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's definitely just because this man's pulling, like, 260. He makes a move like that. I don't think... You know, I don't know if he if he was wearing brick shoes. I don't know if he would that would stop him from going through them. You know what I mean? I don't think it was it was Nike. I don't I don't feel it was. I don't think it was Nike. I don't know the details in terms of how many times he's worn those shoes. Yeah. They were Paul George's signature line. Which shoes? Tell <laughs> you something. Which right is tough for Paul George because he was getting heat on Twitter last night about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But does I mean it does affect <laughs> the company in terms of stock? I mean, listen, their stock was down nearly one percent today. Wow. Yeah, they dropped That's big crazy. time. And they had they have to I mean it's 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 understandable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> your shoe, but you can't your shoe's supposed to be on you. It's supposed to keep you, you yeah. know, yeah, it's keep going. you safe. That's true, That's but exactly what who really prepared for, PR, for that type of weight? PR know? disaster for Nike. That's right? true. But they yeah. are Nike, they'll cover up. It just That's almost what I'm saying. Like it, it's, it's it it makes Nike look a little bad because I mean, no matter if you have shack feet. Nah, you know that's true. Or, that's true. Even if you was Bigfoot himself, you got to be <laughs> able to keep... That's why they wear shoes, is to keep them safe and not break their ankles. You know what I'm saying? And and if that's not doing the job, then it's, they, it makes them look bad. They gotta, Obviously, it's they Nike. They got to up the so quality of the product, then. Nike, can, in all honesty. This is an opportunity for them to yeah. launch a whole new little campaign. Do exactly. a little more research. Find a signature shoe for Zion and sign into their huge That's deal. That's true. Exactly. I agree with that. Hey, Zion, you want a better shoe? Sign with us. We'll put extensive research into a new shoe for you. And he That's just brought up an excellent point. You know Nike always. they they the type that they, they always see opportunity in anything. Mm -hmm. Even with the Kaepernick situation. Oh, yeah. They saw an they opportunity. Jumped they jumped on it. Why? Because who buys Nike? The young people. Who supports Kaepernick? The young people. So... Nike always sees opportunities to make money, and they seeing this, and people was like, "Oh, this is a bad PR move for Nike," which it is. Oh, we gonna make, we gonna flip it, turn it into a profit, because mm -hmm. that's no, what we are. Nike, be just fine. do it. They're gonna rebound. They'll be fine. That's why they're at the top of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why they're at the top of the game, and we in the huddle. Six zero seven seven five three forty eight one nine is the request line. Call up. Call we'll up. We'll be back in the next four minutes to talk. A.B. Antonio Brown, Ooh. do not go nowhere, folks. We out here on this show. All right, all right, we are back in the huddle. What a great show so, show so far. We we talking everything right now. Or you can talk sports, you know, like how you, or you can eat at a buffet. <laughs> or you can talk sports. We out here, you know, of course, me, of Kenny course. C, and Anthony. It rhymes, too. So, you know, me, Kenny C, and Anthony. You know what I mean? We out here rhyming, too. What a great show. What a great show, ladies and gentlemen. Love it. But anyway, Let's it's time to get this. into Antonio Brown, Mr. Diva himself, who had a meeting with Mr. Ronnie, and both have agreed that it's time to move on. You know, like a love song, you know, that breakup song. It's time to move on. <laughs> this comes after Brown's comments on Big Ben being a slave master. And we all know about, you know, Brown famously winning out of Still City. So now that this is a fact, Right, and we could dive a little bit onto his comments on Big Ben because I got some things to say about Big Ben That's, too. Yeah. But which team is the best team for AB right now? One right. team. So I picked the Indianapolis Colts, and here's why: 
Last year, they made the playoffs. They won the wild card. They lost in the divisional. And it's definitely because they need, you know, another asset to their team. Obviously, maybe a little bit of improvement on their defense. But I believe it would be the best fit for him because not only can he make them a better playoff team, but Andrew Luck, who proved his star ability last season after he was, like, you know, off for a season or two. And he came back strong last season. Obviously, he got hurt. Last season, he looked great. He was stellar in the pocket. And then if you have A.B., you also have T.Y. Hilton and Eric Ebron. I think that's a solid receiving core right there. And in my opinion, obviously, Antonio Brown is better than T.Y. Hilton. He will definitely be the number one star, the number one, you know, receptions leader on that team. And Frank Reich, the head, the head coach, he's a great play-calling engineer, and I think he'll definitely incorporate A.B. into the offense big time. You like, like the Colts. Yeah. Well, I'm not a Colts fan, but I like the Yeah, you like the team. The pick. Yeah. Even Luck would be awesome. That would yeah. be solid, I'd right? Pair him with the that would be QB. solid. I could really see him doing damage, man. Facts. I mean, he, he really had a good QB, mm -hmm. but on a team like that. Of course. I think the Colts are, could be a Super Bowl favorite. That's what I'm saying. Players. That's what I'm saying, They're man. They're saying Le'Veon. I definitely, Colts, I definitely like the Le'Veon more than I like the, the Browns. I think the I like the I like, I like the Le'Veon. Le'Veon. The play know. action that would come out of that. But, but then we got to look at Le'Veon. This man gained... 35 pounds in the offseason. He was 225. He was eating them hamburgers. He was eating them hamburgers and them french this fries. Man, hamburger helper. He exactly. posted a snap on IG on his story. Mm -hmm. And you can have, you see in the little right corner, it's like a TV screen. I think he was mm -hmm. playing the new game Apex Legends. You know yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's playing Old that dude. game. He won, whatever. He posts a snap. And then the bottom right, you see four rolled tobacco leaves. And I'm just like, oh, come, come on. on. What are you doing? Yeah. See, that's why I'm saying. And, and it's just I'm so taking obvious. Antonio Brown. He's on ESPN. It's like circled in the bottom right corner. I'm like, what are you doing, my man? I mean, you know, <laughs> his man has too much free time. Yo, the I mean, y'all don't mean you always got to put weed to your mouth. Blunts rolled, right? I mean, Stay off the weed. I mean, you got to do something, man. <laughs> As I mean, Stephen A says. Exactly, man. Like, there's so much else things you can do, man. You know what I'm saying? And you always got to will up some daggone joint. I don't understand that. I don't get it. Going it's... back into this, though. What do you guys pick? So I need to hear him. I like the Packers. I think that's hey, the clear cut I'm right a Green there. Bay fan, Aaron Rodgers. So I support that. Aaron Rodgers is in need, indeed, of a wide receiver right now. Jimmy Graham didn't do nothing 100%. but eat graham crackers. Okay, he didn't do nothing but eat graham crackers. He's All washed right? up. He's washed up. He's old. Tight ends do not last long in this league. We've seen it with Gronk. Even though Gronk definitely showed up towards the end of the mm -hmm. season with those last two games, he still didn't play good. But prior to that, tight ends don't last. I right, Devontae Adams, I need more than Devontae Adams. He Jordan Nelson was his best option. We really oh, know he got sh man. shifted to the Raiders. So Aaron Rodgers is in need of a wide receiver. He reminds me of LeBron James right now. LeBron James ain't getting any younger. Rodgers, LeBron James Aaron needs to win now. Man. Aaron no Rodgers out, needs That's what I'm exactly. Saying, man. Aaron Rodgers needs to win now. He's not the young Aaron Rodgers anymore. 100%. He still got a couple more years left. But he's he 30, needs to win now. Right now. And that's why I believe A.B. going there with Aaron Rodgers, that strong arm, A.B. being able to burn wide receivers, catch that ball. Lil, I, like I couldn't that pick. agree more. That would be a highlight film, in my opinion. Yes. And being a Packer fan, I'd love to see that. You see what A.B. posted the other day. He was on IG Live. Mm -hmm. And he was saying how you know, he wants to be the winning team. Yeah. He wants money. I mean, not good <laughs> to begin with yeah. for him to do that. But I do like, I like the Packers, but I also like, I would love to see him on the Cardinals, but he's not going to go there. He's not going to, yeah. you know, I think Tim yeah, Rosen thing. would be so beneficial. True. To have that definitely helped Rosen. Like that. that would help Rosen develop. You, see, you hear the 49ers constantly. With that Kyle, might be I think decent, Kyle though. Shanahan would have a lot of things that, that he would, would do with decent. him. Him, Garoppolo would be a nice yeah, combination. Right? He yeah. wants to go somewhere warm, it looks like. Yeah. And he wants to be a number one option. He how always about, complains about reception. How imagine the Patriots. Oh, come on. <laughs> you heard but about they, them, you heard about them trying to trade for Odell. Yeah, they need Why it. wouldn't they try and trade for A B? They need True. him, but they, I don't see the Steelers True. doing business with him. <laughs> I don't see the Steelers doing business with the Patriots. I don't see at all. And they even too. said they even came out with a report yesterday that they're not dealing him in the AFC North nor the Patriots. You don't think Bill Belichick will even just make a call? He knows he's not gonna get him, but yeah. no, one Bill no one built Belichick. No one built scheming something. He's scheming. I mean, no he, will, he will scheme you out of your franchise. Apparently, they tried to trade for Odell. Yeah, they did. And they which did. Is, not apparently. They did. Which, yeah, they did. Odell, topic, which is a whole other topic of Odell. I'm tired of it. I'm tired you know. of the trade. Every single offseason, Odell traded. 
I get he's a superstar, but enough. You, you, you just signed into a, a record-breaking deal. Player, man. Exactly. The Giants are not better without Odell Beckham Jr. It's that exactly. clear. Exactly. And you pick a new quarterback. All right, Eli stays another year, which mm -hmm. I think he will. Yeah. Even if you draft a quarterback, you don't think not you don't think having Odell is going to help his quarterback having Saquon in the backfield, oh, Odell yeah. out exactly. wide right. It Sterling just helps Shepherd. your young quarterback. You got Shep on the inside. You got Ingram mm -hmm. down the stretch of the field. Yeah. It doesn't make sense, these trade rumors, and I'm tired of hearing them. It's, I mean, just, I'm it's a bunch of TMZ talks. I'm tired of hearing them, talk, too, man. because both Saquon and Barkley and, and, and OBJ or guys, that when they touch the ball mm -hmm. in their hands, there's no expecting what they can do. They can do anything. They can yeah. turn four-yard gains into 30-yard gains. They mm -hmm. that electric. So imagine that. Imagine having to account for Saquon Barkley and, and, and actually play defense on OBJ. I mean, then you got another quarterback in the mix. And OBJ, honestly, as much as I could sit here and say that OBJ is a diva, which he is, what we've been seeing from player. Antonio Brown makes OBJ close. look like a citizen. That's <laughs> it looks good. Looks like a saint. It's not even exactly. close. It's not even close. <laughs> exactly. Between this comparison between Antonio. Exactly. He and looked OBJ. like a saint. He looked like a Seven Day Adventist right now. When have you ever heard it, uh, OBJ really calling out his teammates? Never. I mean, never. Man. Never. When I disagree with the thing he did with Lil Wayne, it was immature. I yeah, know, about with Eli was, Manning. It was, that was one time. It was the one time he did something out of. And then he came back a bald. He came that back day. Oh, and yeah. his teammates love him. You talk to his teammates. OBJ is one. One of the hardest workers in the NFL. Antonio Brown is too. I Antonio Brown. Instagram, One thing about man. OBJ. I follow him on Instagram. I OBJ see how hard definitely he works. be working out. Oh, he yeah. definitely he's he the loved the game. And I would he say the same game. for Antonio Brown. He's been dad his whole career. He's a small receiver. Oh, yeah, he's yeah. not tall. But OBJ, I'm tired of hearing he's a cancer. He's the face of the franchise, like it or not. The Giants exactly. made him that. They signed him for this exactly. big deal. Get over it. I don't even want to hear that, man. Exactly. If you're a big blue fan, you love OBJ. Yeah. And if you're a football yeah. fan, you got to love OBJ. Everything the that man, he does. The, the man the, balls out the mark, every game. The miraculous catches that this brother makes. Insane. It brings people to the stadium. It makes people... I wanted to see the Giants games last year because of OBJ and Saquon Barkley. Yeah. It wasn't to see Eli washed himself. It wasn't to see Pat Strim over there making googly eyes at his players on the sideline. It wasn't to see Sterling Shepard. It was to see OBJ and Saquon Barkley. Whoa, whoa, whoa. With Eli, though, I don't you think know, it was his line, too. I feel like Eli, Eli is a little washed Eli, up. Eli, to me, has been overrated line, throughout man. his career. In he my opinion. Yeah, even We all know about the line. I just feel like Eli Manning has been overrated. I think I Eli know. could make every throw. He's not, we know what Eli is. We know he's not a mobile quarterback. And we understand that you have to give him a line. Mm -hmm. You have to give him a run game. And, and a have, defense. Listen, yeah, and a defense. You give any, but you have to give any quarterback a no, defense. No, that's true. That's true. But unless you're, unless you're Tom Brady exactly. or Aaron Rodgers. Exactly. Mm -hmm. When Eli those, Manning those won those two, Super Bowls, he had top level defenses, Michael even, Strahan, but he also, but even and he had Brady, wide receivers. Though, if Brady didn't have his line, he's not doing anything. Listen, Brady has been in a he's system. He's not mobile. Brady's been in a Patriot system that he's. I'm not saying Brady. I'm not taking anything away from him. I'm saying he's been in a stable situation his whole career. That's what in I In terms of management, in terms of head coaching. Oh, yeah. I mean, listen, Eli, ever since Coughlin left, it's been Ben McAdoo, who's yeah, a fool. I don't even want to mention no, the head coach. <laughs> that team is with the Giants. Exactly. Forget, forget Ben McAdoo. I think he, <laughs> after the first year, he slicked back his hair. He got these new sunglasses. I don't know who he thought he was. <laughs> I don't know that, who he man. thought he was either. He thought he was, he was Mr. Smooth he dude over he here. He was something else. Mr. He, Don Calion. Yeah. And like... <laughs> Well, listen, I think I think Pat Shermer, the difference between him, Ben McAdoo, and Pat Shermer is Pat Shermer has a way with players. You can tell mm -hmm. that players like him, that he's a, he's a player's coach. Mm -hmm. The team, even the team when they crumbled and they were losing every game towards the, the season, the team still stuck up and played for him through in and out. I respect that. And I'm, I hope the Giants are going in the right direction. Listen, Eli, need, they need a new quarterback. It's that simple. No, oh, that's true. You have another year if. It's Eli, true. Before a Dwayne Haskins, or I feel like, I feel like, yeah, they should definitely invest in a quarterback in this draft. And I agree with you. Like, I feel like if you're Eli, it's just, it's at that point where if you're not, if you don't play well this season, it's time to just. Hang if up you're the not cleats. winning, it's it's over. I Eli think knows that now. There if was a lot winning, of throws that Eli fails to make against the game against the Eagles. Um, you know, there was a couple plays questionable. That he did not make. Eli yeah. Manning is too... He's been in the league too long. He's been a veteran. He won Super Bowls. 
He has to make those plays, right? We all know you need a line in order to be able to set up right and, and make those. Mm-hmm. But when you have the opportunity to make those throws and you are a veteran, you have to make those throws. Mm-hmm. Any opportunity you get to elevate your team, you have to when you get those well, opportunities. Then, well, then you look I don't at, see a lot with Eli Manning. You look at Rodgers, too, though. Like Being a Packer fan, I watch game after game. Rodgers didn't look, him, look himself at I mean, all. He don't got no wobbly seat to throw the ball, throws too. After throws. I mean, that's true, but he, I mean, and that is true. He definitely missed out de- some throws. Big like third downs I was watching. This man But when you it. think about it, when you have no coach... Right? Obviously, mm-hmm. we all know Mike McCartney, his situation. It was coming to, and he calls all the plays. It was not working. I hate the way the Packers ended with Mike McCartney. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's awful. That's a whole big thing, yeah, too. A, I definitely yeah. I definitely agree. You don't do that when you to, have you don't do that to a dog coach. coach. When you have 10 straight a seasons team. with the playoffs. Crazy. Exactly. And when you have guys like Devontae Adams, who was told to take a, a, a knee, sort of like Kaepernick, but mm-hmm. in the game, yeah, yeah, yeah. when he would turn the punk foot and he fumbled it, when you have stuff like that, all the, it could. <laughs> Dehumanize you. It could, you know, just zap the air out of you. Aaron Rodgers had no air in him no more. Dealing with injuries, just you Washed saw what he did line. when he came back in the Chicago second half. He brought them back to the victory. Yeah. He has no weapons to throw the ball to. Oh, yeah. So it's just almost like you know, I'm not gonna make the playoffs. I mean, come on, yeah, they gotta put something around him. That's why That's AB makes the most sense. We to need you. something. We need. We definitely need more veteran talent in our secondary as well because. We have a bunch of young guys, and none of them seem to know what they're doing. And then we go, then we go ahead and get rid of Clinton Dix at safety, which, in my opinion, was a terrible move. But you know, I could go on for a while about my team. Packers need to rebuild quickly. They yeah. do. They're they're not in this, they do. They're not in the conversation of rebuilding. They're in the mm-hmm. conversation of reloading. And you know, that's they because they have Aaron Rodgers. You got to get it it's together. It's because they got a quarterback yeah, exactly. who is. Arguably the best quarterback in the NFL. Mm-hmm. And I like Rodgers. I hope, yeah. he, I hope he finds a big Rodgers team. We'll see. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached halftime, and we'll be back in the next five to seven minutes to talk more sports, ladies and gentlemen. We got our In the Huddle news right after halftime. Don't go nowhere. 607-753-4819 is the request line. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. WSEC 90.5 FM, The Dragon. Thank you all for listening out there, Central New Yorkers, live streamers. You can follow us also on Twitter and Instagram, at WSEC FM. We're going to jump right back into the huddle. So just kick it off. And the huddle news. Time is the huddle news. I will go over the first two topics, and then my man Leo over here will go through the, uh, the other two. First up, we have Le'Veon Bell recently became a free agent. The team, the Steelers did not choose to use the franchise tag on him. And this man wants $50 million from teams. And he also gained 35 pounds in the offseason, going from 225 pounds to 265 pounds in the offseason, which poses a serious thing to talk about, you know, in terms of interested teams. The Jets had an interest, interest last year. Or recently, and now that they heard that Bell gained this much weight, this much weight, excuse me, they become questionable on whether or not they wanted him. Any thoughts from you two, Anthony Lil? I mean, like how we briefly touched on it, um, Le'Veon mm-hmm. Bell, he was over there smoking a lot of weed, <laughs> and you know he got overweight, and he needs to get in shape, especially if he wants a team to really give him that deal that he's looking for. Because I'm not paying him what I just saw. And I saw all them stacks of weed on top of weed that I see. I'm not giving him a dag on dime. True. Yeah. And look what Le'Veon's been doing all season. I mean, he's been jet skiing in Miami. He's been, it seems like he's been having a good time with his boys. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, stay in your grind. Stay in your training schedule. I mean, <laughs> what did you say, 20, what was it? Yeah, uh, 25, 35 pounds. 35, 35, 35 pounds. 35 pounds? I mean, that better be muscle, Le'Veon, because you're not getting a... The deal you want with that <laughs> weight. He's going to fail the physical, if anything. Exactly. We'll have to see. I don't know. I haven't seen him, in per- like, you know, mm. actually. But who knows if he'll be as talented not, as well. That report is not good for him. Mm-hmm. Or his, At all. Yeah, it's horrible. And the next thing that I found interesting, you know, this week is recently in early February, the Alliance of American Football started. It's a new league. Started by Charlie Ebersole and Bill Polian, owned by Tom Dundon. He also owns the Carolina Hurricanes NHL hockey team. And it started about a week after the Super Bowl, and it seems pretty interesting. Eight centrally owned teams, 
it was actually founded in March uh, of 2018, and it just now recently started this February. Headquarters is in San Francisco, California, and it's mainly for, you know, mm. players that were cut by teams and that still want a chance to play, and also to showcase local and developing talent. And you know, just one name from a formerly a former player is Trent Richardson, running back. He played for the Colts, and I think a couple other teams. He's in the league. And just one more quick thing. The advisors in the league are some big names. Former Steelers wide receiver Heinz Ward, former New York Giants and Oakland Raiders defensive end Justin Tuck, and current NFL rules analyst Mike Pereira. So this league has a lot of potential, and I like it. What do you guys think? Uh, it has potential. Obviously, it was almost in-depth. Mm -hmm. After the week even, one. Yeah, after week one. So, you know, if they get the financial situation right, Obviously, they're looking like they in, you know, talks of doing so, mm -hmm. in progress of doing so. Um, if you love football, what can I say? You got more football. Exactly. Hey, we're in the offseason, so <laughs> more football is not bad football. So Exactly. Uh, give it a shot. I mean, I've seen highlights of it. I've seen some crazy plays. Mm -hmm. It seems like the quarterbacks is getting blasted <laughs> with no flag. <laughs> quarterbacks are throwing the ball behind their, their head. It's yeah. crazy. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, give it a shot. I mean, there's nothing. There's guys in the, in the league that are running it that have experience and they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. So I'm definitely going to give it a shot. I've seen highlights. i got to watch a full game. Then I'll let you know how I really feel about it. All right. Sounds good. Leo, take All it away. All right. The next in the huddle news over here is, you know, unfortunately, sad huddle news. Syracuse Jim um, Boham involved in a fatal car accident that killed the pedestrian on the highway and my prayers and condolences go out to that brother um may his family be able to take this loss and be able to recover from it you know very soon and this is a bad situation um for the head coach obviously of Syracuse because mm -hmm. you know obviously that's something that you don't want happening it's a distraction he was coming I believe he was driving after the game on his way home wow. so obviously that's something that you know I don't know if he what he said to the public as of yet. Um, hopefully, when I get that news, I'll be able to read it, um, see how what how he felt about the situation. But I'm pretty sure, you know, he's kicking himself for that situation. Um, I had a report. I just got to get this up right now. You know, my laptop bear with me. I could be able to get this report out real quick. Of uh, something that he said during after the situation. Mm -hmm. um, just work with me, Central New York. There is a request line to call right now. Six zero seven. 753-4819 Once again, 607 753-4819 Is the number that you can call But basically, yes, here we go So he was returning home You know, from dinner with his wife and his friends And, you know, after he guided or the Orange um, To 69-49 victory over Number 18 Louisville at the Carrier Dome A few hours earlier You know, so his response was Um... It was a, just a terrible, unfortunate situation, car accident. Uh, we don't know exactly what caused the fatal accident. And actually, this is one of his friends. Um, Coach Byronham was not involved in the accident, was involved in the accident, and so on. So, you know, obviously, sad situation. But like I said, my condolences go out to the family. And the next in the huddle topic, what's the next in, in the huddle topic? Um, wasn't it? It is... I so believe, we just gotta load our notes up. Yeah, you know, laptops acting up lately. You guys, I need <laughs> the a mechanic. Here is not the best. Yeah, it really, it's really not, not the best. Central New York, it's really not the best going on. But we here, right? We here. Last topic, Lil, is uh, is Clint Capella. There we go. Clint, Clint Capella is set to return tonight against the Lakers after being out for about eight weeks due to a thumb injury. And what I would say is that you know, this is a good thing for the Rockets. Obviously, he's been beasting on the boards this year. Um, James Harden, you all know he likes to throw him those lobs and he's a beast on the board. So, mm -hmm. anything that can help James Harden out that the Rockets need to get, I think that this is a big help. Any, any, I got thoughts on this? It's a good time to come back, right? Uh, right before the playoffs. Right before the playoffs, yeah. a little stretch, get that chemistry back. We talked mm -hmm. about Harden throwing him lobs. Capella is a huge part of the team and uh, they need him back. The Rockets want to have a shot at, you know, contending with Golden State and other people in the conference. Uh, it's good he's back, and 
excited for it. 100%. Get I these mean, playoffs on their way, right? For real. And a big man like that that averages 17 points, 12 rebounds a game, you need that man back, and I definitely think that he will be a big asset for the Rockets moving forward. For sure. For sure. But now moving on to the next topic. Wraps up the huddle news. That wraps up, yup. That wraps up in the huddle news. And now it's time for our all-star festivities reactions. So let me ask y'all. Give me (laughs) one thing that this all-star weekend, this previous all-star weekend, told y'all. Lil, honestly, I said that KD, Kevin Durant, being the MVP of the All-Star game, dropped 31 points in it, seven seven rebounds, two assists. You know, he did not hesitate to ball out. Obviously, there was a lot of, you know, lackluster defense in the game. But from what I see, I believe that moving ahead after the season's over, once, you know, free agency hits, I believe that KD will be the biggest free agent target yes there's clay thompson kemba walker anthony davis you know jimmy butler guys like that but Kyrie. hands down yeah Kyrie. hands down i believe KD is the best option out of them all he proved to us that he can make a huge impact on a team he has three rings <coughs> yes he's considered a snake but i believe that's in the past now sensitive snake <laughs> you know his talent is undeniable and i feel like he's you know he could definitely help to change a franchise so I believe he was the biggest thing that, out of the All-Star game. Big thing that came out for me um, in terms of the actual All-Star weekend, the uh, three-point contest was mm-hmm. awesome. <laughs> That's yeah, what I agree. It was. The dunk contest was good, too, but i waiting for next year's dunk contest when Mr. Zion was, Williamson enters the ring. Yeah. And the third thing, um, the All-Star game is great, but once again, KD and Kyrie Irving, those two seem to bond it up. Over yeah, well, they bonding, they bonding. Something's going you know, on. And something. they, had, they had dinner, yeah, too, as well. Yeah, dinner. <laughs> a little secret Uh-oh. dinner. Uh-oh. Come, come to New York. York. Come, come New York. to New York. New York on the payroll. If they want to if they wanna excite some fans and they want to, you know, um, go against what's the status quo with the Knicks, mm-hmm. come to New York. Come Challenge to yourself. Exactly. The last person that did it was Amari Stoudemire that started it up. He, had, you know, he, mm-hmm. you know, had the, I don't want to say balls. I said, he no, he was, he, he was to solid. Come yeah. here and, he was and solid. Come here and, you know, bring in Carmelo and welcome him. It didn't pan out <laughs> right. But listen, if you want to come to the Knicks, it's there for you. you we got the 70 mil. We seven. got the cap space. We, got <laughs> we can pay mil. both of y'all. Take the challenge on for one. And we might get That's the number I'm one saying. pick. And we here, might get Zion. If you come here, you're a legend. Just for signing on that dot line, just to come to the Knicks, <laughs> the, these fans will love you. Exactly. And they're saying Brooklyn's in contention as well, but it's not the same, man. I don't think that this it's is no... It's not MSG. Listen, you don't have the leverage. It's not the garden, man. They can sit here... To the media, tell the media mm-hmm. these fairies. Like, it was just an ordinary dinner. How ironic that we see these two people hanging out, going for dinner, when they free agency is coming up. And they've been linked together. How ironic. You think, True. You think over that dinner, that, that didn't come up in terms of, all right, so uh, what are yeah. we doing next yeah. summer, that's right? Yeah, exactly. I know they didn't go to that dinner and was like, well, KD, how's your dog doing? <laughs> yeah. Oh, my dog is doing fine. How yeah, your dog doing? Game is no, great, blah, no, blah, blah, blah. No. Listen, they were talking future. future. They were talking future. Right, all right, on. not the rapper. They was talking actual future, okay? But what I took from this All-Star weekend was that Giannis is actually the MVP yeah. this season. Going Legit. into it, I had OG. James Harden averaging 36 points a game. But when I look at it, you talked about that a when I see how Giannis is doing, the impact that he has on the game, his athletic build... The way how the Bucks is the number one seed right now, when I didn't expect that, nobody expected it. We thought there was going to be a mid-range four, five seed in the East, and to be number one and have a good shot of coming out the East and making the finals, I, 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 I he's he's the MVP in my eyes. If I had to cast my vote today, Giannis I'm going Giannis. Is, Giannis is a freak of nature. I mean, he is just different. You he's saw that? You saw that dunk crazy. when oh, Curry crazy. bounced it off the floor. He jumped what, yes. seven, eight feet in the air. I, I didn't even know that he was going to get that. I think that's what separates the NBA All-Star game from, like, the NFL. Yes. And oh, yeah. Like, even if they're not playing that great of defense, these guys mm-hmm. are, you know, high-caliber athletes. Yeah, having fun. They are the best athletes in the world. Mm-hmm. They're jumping. You know, they're going to showcase their talent. Yeah, they're going to show their athleticism. They're mm-hmm. going to make some awesome plays. It's always fun to watch. And especially towards the end, it always gets a little competitive. 
You talked about what is it, three or four years ago, Kobe, uh, D Wade broke Kobe's nose. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is wild. It's always crazy. You know? But I, I like the NBA All Star Game. I wish they could put a little more um, weight on it. You see what the MLB does with their All Star Game. Yeah, they put home, home field advantage. advantage. And it's That's a big huge. argument. You know, a lot of people have different say, sayings on it, but but I, the NBA All Star Game is good. That motivates. That motivates the teams to, you know, play at their best ability, as they should. If you're an all-star, you should show that you're an all-star. So th I'm glad that you brought that up because I feel like the MLB is one of those, one of the rare sports where it actually means something to play well in the all-star game. So, you know, I definitely think maybe they should incorporate that into other sports because we all see how the Pro Bowl is like a joke. The Pro Bowl yeah, is, it is a joke. Pro Bowl is a joke. It's taken away. It's such a joke. It's, it's a, a joke. joke. You might as well put flags on these guys because they don't touch exactly. each other, man. Exactly. They don't. They, um, it's, a, it's basically a joke. And, you know, like I said, the NBA, I can't say the same thing, the same thing about the NFL, about me saying that the NBA is in a good place right now. Do you think the mm -hmm. NBA... Is in a good place? Yeah, I think it is in a good place. I think Adam Silver's done an unbelievable job. Oh, yeah. unbelievable you look job. at the NFL and the mess Goodell, they're dealing man. with for Goodell and Forget the suspensions. And the inconsistency, the the inconsistency with the suspensions. Draft. He gets booed at drafts, at Super draft. Bowls. You know, he get booed <laughs> at his own house probably. You see what Adam Silver, the report came out that uh, he was actually is in his head pursuing uh, an NFL commissioner. Wow. Yeah. That would be That was crazy. a report that came out. I'll That'd try and crazy. find it. Wow. But imagine Silver being the commissioner wow. of the NFL as well. So would he wow. what would he do? Resign from the NBA then? No, he'd probably he'd go do he'd try to do both. That'd be I think that'd be way too much <laughs> to have on his hands. Yeah. Do it all yeah. that. I don't think yeah. he'd be able to do both. I think yeah. he thought about it. I think it was probably yeah, unrealistic. Yeah. You I mean, know, you when you're at the top when you're at the top and you you know, you get caught. You be like, you know what? I could do this thing. And yeah, then you realize, yeah. like, you come back to Earth and you be like, nah, I, I really can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, he's I mean, doing but, such a good job. Yeah, he's doing an amazing job. I think Cadell needs to go. <laughs> I mean, he's done some uh, He's done some yeah, good things for I've NFL said, and I've CTE, been but it's just, it comes to a point where if you're not getting the job done and the fans aren't liking the product, yeah, the, field, the fans don't even like him. It's about the product and you're ruining it. You're he's ruining, ruining the game. You're ruining the NFL and you're exactly. ruining the game. The I understand, game being, I I understand safety. But when it becomes a game where, you know... <laughs> you can't do anything. They can't do anything anymore. They need to figure it out. And then players don't get paid enough. That's the NFL players you need. But mm -hmm. we can go on and on about Goodell. Yeah. And the horrible job he's done. But exactly. We got a whole show. We, all we got a whole talk show <laughs> talking about how bad this That's guy has been doing. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but... But when we come back a from a commercial break, very short commercial break... We're going to get into AD possibly being open and traded to being traded to Boston. Plus, our little pregame, as we all know, the NBA is back tonight. And we have a double header on TNT. We're going to get you caught up on that with our predictions. Don't go nowhere. We in the huddle. The huddle with Kenny C, Lil, and Anthony are our guests today. <coughs> and let's get right down to it, Lil. All right. It's a report that AD says that he is open to all 29 teams. And most importantly, there were reports that he said that he never discussed not going to Boston. He's open to Boston. So in your eyes, do you see Boston having a legitimate opportunity of landing AD? I mean, honestly, it really comes down to if they have enough money to pay this man. And, you know, also just a little thing about AD. My man, you got you to gotta worry about finishing your two years left on your contract before you start talking about where you're going to go next. And third of all, come to the Knicks. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, he said he said in his list, he said Lakers, Clippers, Knicks, Bucks mm -hmm. at first, right? And it almost seems like Anthony Davis has his eyes set on L.A., has his eyes set on the Lakers. Yeah. I mean, if you're the Celtics, listen, does it, is it going to stop you from trying to trade for him? No. Mm -hmm. But is the guy going to – I believe if he goes to Boston, he's going to sign him long term. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah. But I really True. think that L.A. is pretty much where he's going to end up. It seems like so. him and LeBron – have you seen the shop? Mm -hmm. You know the shop? Yeah, the show? yeah. The show, him, yeah. Anthony Davis, and Antonio Brown are both oh, going to be that. next guests on I the saw show. That. I saw that too. I just see too much LeBron, A.D. to think otherwise as if he's not going to go to L.A. So uh, – And that's – They're colluding all year. They've been – 
without a doubt, to recruit who yeah. he wants. He's going to try. I don't like how LeBron does that. LeBron's playing GM here. And it's not fair to the it's Lakers. Ridiculous. It's not fair to... It's fair, um, not fair to the league and the franchises that he's trying to recruit the players from. Exactly. It's not fair at all. And mm. I, my thing is, for a player of that caliber, LeBron James, mm -hmm. who is in the argument of being the GOAT. Obviously, Jordan and me is the GOAT. But, you know, there's people that would say LeBron James is the GOAT. If you're that player of that caliber, you should be wanting. You shouldn't be wanting to go with guys, or you shouldn't be having to recruit guys. Guys should want to come to you. Exactly. Yeah? And exactly. I feel like LeBron James has been doing that throughout his career, going to D Wade, going under D Wade's ring, and taking over that team with the Wade Wade there, winning championships because he never won one. And Bosh. And then Kyrie, you know, wanted to come back with Kyrie. Kyrie wanted out. Kawhi don't want to go over there. Kawhi yeah. wanted to go to the Lakers. Now LeBron James is over there. He wants to go to the Clippers. So, like, my thing is, LeBron James, guys should want to come to you. You shouldn't have to recruit a daggone soul. You're LeBron James on the Lakers. They should want to come to you. You shouldn't be tampering, colluding, all that. Taking guys out to dinner, rubbing their feet, none of that. <laughs> I saw a report come out earlier in the year. It's, it, quote, unquote, from ESPN. LeBron's camp wants Luke Walton out. <laughs> LeBron's camp. Yeah. LeBron I mean, James LeBron, had... Listen, I don't care what your camp says. Exactly. I'm Lakers and Jeannie exactly. Buss. I'm saying, listen, LeBron, you're making your money. You're my player. You. Not only that, you, you got what you wanted. You're in L.A. You're more than a player. Mm -hmm. I you got your direct, shows. He's directing you, a you show. You got the next Space Jam. Space Jam. Get it. Like, you come listen, on, LeBron. Exactly. Play basketball. Listen, you're going to have the chance to, to be a GM or a head coach in the future. Yes. Right now, you're a basketball player. See, so stay playing basketball. That right there is where you could tell him shut up and dribble. Yeah. In that instance, you could <laughs> in tell him instance. shut up and dribble. In like, come instance. on, man, you can't. You're not the. You're not in the office of the team. You you're a player on the team. Yes, you're a player, but and let I them their job. That LeBron James is the <laughs> coach's worst nightmare. You think about the coaches that got fired. He is the coach. LeBron Le of the coach. So that's why you know. You know, um, who's the coach for Cleveland? Um, God said my mind. Ty Lue. Yeah, Ty Lue. He went out and went, made it out of his way to make Luke Walton feel comfortable, saying that LeBron James coaching him is easy. That's a bunch of lies. Ty Lue took a back seat to LeBron. Exactly. He and was having seizures. He was LeBron's boy. Like, he was like, there was no, like, respect. Boy, he was, it, was a, it was a couple of highlights <laughs> where LeBron James was telling what Ty Lue should run and, and actually over vetoing. Like uh, the president, vetoing yeah. Ty Lue's play. It was ridiculous. LeBron was a player coach. Ty Lue yeah, exactly. was chilling in that exactly. spot. He understood his role. Exactly. David Black, he knew the team he had. David Black beforehand had wanted control of the team, and he, LeBron said no, and look what happened. And my team is out of here. Man. It's ridiculous. LeBron controls the destiny of head coaches. Exactly. I get star players do, but not to this extent. I don't think we've ever seen no, this. No, we've never seen hey, Jordan never. This is my team. Yeah, you know he recognized Phil Jack was the man. He's gonna listen to Phil Jack. Exactly. Jordan's my thing is my thing is, is if you're Anthony Davis, you are a top three player. You should be wanting to be that star, be that number one guy. If you go play with LeBron James, you're not the number. You're not, you're not the number one guy, and you're not gonna be the vocal point. You're not gonna be the number. I just don't understand how a player of that caliber could want to take a back seat. Because when you're playing with LeBron, you're taking a back seat, whether you're a coach, whether you're a player. You know, Lil, that's a very interesting point because you take a look like, at why? you take a look at him on the Pelicans. Yes, you know they're not the chip. Maybe that's the reason. But if you want to be and you want to be the team's number one guy, like don't go to LA. I saw uh, I saw something on ESPN the other day. They were talking about uh, the Lakers are concerned with LeBron's health, rightfully so. Mm -hmm. and his durability and what he thinks is right and what he thinks is wrong. They were saying that LeBron being hurt almost helps the Lakers land another primetime player because of an increased role with that player. The player will be like, all right, listen, I can kind of control more. Wow. And LeBron's getting older. He's taking more of a back seat. I'm not saying, mm -hmm. you know, it's not LeBron anymore. but Yeah. It almost like kind of like all right, listen, LeBron. LeBron needs to be center of show. That's why Kyrie wanted out. I mean, LeBron just takes control of the team, and you get to a point where you know, it's like, all right, what about what about me? I mean, mm. Look what Kyrie did in Cleveland. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if barbecue chicken went to see fried chicken, I'm hungry right now. So I'm, talk, I'm talking food right now. I mean, fried chicken got the title. Why would barbecue want to take a back seat to fried chicken? 
Like I said, I'm starving right now. I'm thinking about food <laughs> on my mind right now. We got 20 minutes left to go. I'm starving. <laughs> I'm going straight to get food. But for real, I know honesty here is, I just feel like. So you want, you want AD to go to a team and be his own man, be his own, have his own team? Yeah, or, you know. Rather than see him join or, LeBron in LA. Exactly. You know, or you rather see go somewhere and let me start something and I go, can, yeah, who, exactly. who wants to play go with to me? Go to a better team. Or go yeah. to a better team. And or, like, you know, even if you join the college. Exactly. Yeah. You still gonna be the best player because you're better than Kyrie. So, mm-hmm. something to that extent. Or even if we met up with KD to go to the Knicks. Go to the Knicks. That'd be crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, Two big men like you want to take on. No one wants to take on the challenge of going to New York. Exactly. Media, exactly. With that franchise and the first, the first I person. Think Kyrie, to go, I respect Melo. Even yeah. though Melo didn't do what he wanted to do in New York, mm-hmm. I respect the hell out of him because he came here to a city that won, was starving for playoff basketball, starving for superstar talent. I hate that with a lot. And they got it. And Melo came there, there and he dealt it. with a lot. He, he dealt, dealt with, with coaching a lot. Changes. And I think the players is looking at that, like what he dealt with. You he know, went through hell, Melo. A lot of he drama. Hell. A lot of drama. And players, are, that's probably what hurt the Knicks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, I, it's, it's, it's like, in terms you know, of recruiting players. And yeah. I don't know if KD's built for that. KD, with his sensitive behind, oh, man. I don't know. Stay I don't know. I don't know. Stay I, I can see Kyrie handling that well. Kyrie, look, his personality, I feel, feel well see, with New York. Did you see what Kyrie said today? He said about the whole, uh, the whole yeah, like, talk like, about him and mm-hmm. um, Durant, like, bonding. He's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's like, don't make, like, enough with that. Like, I, yeah. how are you going to do in New York when they start talking about you? <laughs> A lot worse. Situations, but I feel like Kyrie will grow backbone and go there. I feel like Kyrie will handle the situation more than better than KD because KD is very he argue with guys on Twitter. You're I mean, an come all, on. you're an all star. Name this guys behind the keyboard. You're an all star future Hall of Fame basketball player. You should be used to the media already and what people are gonna do. I don't know why yeah. he even feeds into that. That's you know, point. you should be used to whatever interviews and all that already. So. Someone's going to go on Twitter, like you just said. Why are you going to comment back and argue with them? You have nothing to prove to some 12-year-old that's tweeting you. <laughs> exactly. Like, Katie, Katie got his rings. That, 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 that's up past their bedtime. <laughs> like, come on. Listen, Katie got his rings. He did what he had to do to get them. Now, come to New York and solidify you your know, own character. You are, exactly. You know? Become there we you go. now, that's what I, I that's see that. you for once. Yeah. Let's see who KD is again. Exactly. Right? I don't even know exactly. KD know who KD is. I don't is. remember him since OKC. He left his soul there. So. Exactly. <laughs> he really did. I don't Let's know. I don't that. even know if KD this, knows who KD is. This NBA free agency is going to be wild, oh. man. Oh, this it, big man players. Big, and people better enjoy it because next be year it's going to be like this. No, this is the biggest one since when LeBron and see, left the Cavs the first time. And they were, oh, man, it was amazing. With Stoudemire, with LeBron, yeah. and Bosh, Wade. So many different pieces. It's going to be fun to see because the NBA, you could be a bad team with a lottery team one year, and then the next year you pick up a primetime player, and boom, you're in exactly. the Eastern Conference. And this is why, if you're the New York Knicks with $70 million, me and Lil talked about this, I think, the first what'd you show. What would you think of the Przingis trade, both of you? I think, I think we, we, you we did that. go into that, too. He said but, it's... it's it's a, a wait and see exactly. type of trade because because it could be the best trade ever. Exactly, one they, of the best trades ever. If they or don't the utilize the seventy million dollars that they help free up and they gave away their future star, you better get two max deal great. Tell them, Kenny C. You Tell better em. get them and bring them to the garden. <laughs> you might as well just put Katie and Kyrie in that trade in the transcript. Exactly. Because if you don't get, if you That's strike what I'm out. Saying. Them, that trade that would be the worst hard. trade ever. It set the Knicks ever. back a while. But if they do get them and you draft a guy like Zion, maybe R.J. Barrett, yeah. uh, and John Morant, sca- And that's the scary who knows? thing. Mm-hmm. That's the scary thing about it because the oh, Knicks. John Morant. That guy yeah. is the crazy. Knicks have been, crazy athletic. He might be the next Russell Westbrook. Exactly. Yeah. The Knicks have been this low for so long. And what scares me, I mean, it makes me happy and it's anticipating, the Knicks, but man. it scares me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> But what scares me is that we've already been down for so long. If we strike out with this free agency oh, and this draft, do you know that's going to set us back <laughs> way farther? <laughs> like, we're talking. damn. We've been through They'll be done for a while. Exactly. And, and that's the scary part about it. That's why I'm hoping that lunch that they, these two brothers had together <laughs> was productive. We hope. 
Me hope. Yo, I'll I'm cover praying. the tip if you yeah, go to New York. Exactly. I mean, I don't know. I'll probably be homeless. One of them said to the other. I'll probably, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Them I'll too. cover yeah, the yeah. tip if you go to New York. You exactly. Know? I just don't see why they, they, the amount of media and the amount of money in New York, and the marketing, you're in the media capital of the world, you're in the Mecca. Mm-hmm. Come to the Knicks. Right? It's Come crazy, the Knicks. man. I Make them a good team. I always said that about LeBron, but LeBron never, he never really wanted to do he it. He never wanted to deal with that challenge because he wants to play with superstars. Yeah. And yeah. he know that. That's you know, that diva component. Yeah. You know? That's that stack in the deck. And True. I, I'm, I'm not with this stacking of the deck. I believe that I, it's, it's, the league is better with transparency. Mm-hmm. See how the East is, is transparent. You don't even know who's gonna come out the East. It could exactly. be the Bucks. Could be the the Seventy Sixers. It could be the Raptors. It could be the Celtics. It's nice this year. I like it's it. nice. The and West if KD knows, knows over there, it makes them better too. It makes the league better because the rest is stacked. They, we don't need yeah, players coming to the rest anymore. Let you know. Go, let KD go to the East. And let's get this transparency going. Let's mm-hmm. make this it's interesting. You know what I'm saying? Because the league was thinking about it was so bad that the league was thinking about doing a, a playoff um seating where it's one through eight and you play one through eight from east to west. Now they don't have to do that mm-hmm. if KD goes over there. Because the transparency is crazy. It'll balance it out more. It would. Exactly. But the NBA is back tonight, ladies and gentlemen, from All Star Break. This is where the real season starts, okay? Right yes, now, sir, starting yes, tonight, <laughs> is when the real NBA season starts. And we got an NBA doubleheader, a good doubleheader at that. Nothing to be bored about, nothing to fall asleep about, nothing to watch Disney Channel instead about. <laughs> you know, you got the Celtics at the Bucks to, to start it off at 8 p.m. The, 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 the two monsters in the East, along with the Raptors and the 76ers, obviously. I mean, this is a good game, obviously. The Celtics, you know, they've, very been, they've been inconsistent all year. You know, mm-hmm. they'll, they always show up against these good teams. Then these lower part teams, they never show up. And then it always goes to Kyrie, free agency. They get lazy. They get lazy. I feel like the Celtics play better without Kyrie. And that's why I want Kyrie to leave. I feel like without Kyrie, the Celtics play better. They almost made the championship without Kyrie. Mm-hmm. They played better ball without that's Kyrie. True. You saw what that's they true. did against the 76ers. Kyrie wasn't playing in the last game before this break, and they won. Mm-hmm. I feel like they played better without Kyrie, and it's not a knock against Kyrie. I just believe it's probably the system. It's just the chemistry, The I chemistry, guess. whatever. So this is a good game. The Celtics, they want to make a statement in this game. All right, this is, this is the real season. They want to come out swinging and show the people that said that they was going to be the definite favorite to start the year, they want to make a point. And that's why I believe this is going to be an interesting game because it's the Celtics to want to make a point in this primetime game, the first game in the second half where the real season start. And the Bucks obviously, they want to maintain that, okay, we're here now. And be the number we're one seed. Giannis, so excellent all-star game. He want to come out and show. I mean, what y'all think about this game? In my opinion... You know, they beat them back in December, 121-17. Giannis in that game dropped 38-5. and So I'm taking the number one team in the East, and they're number one in points per game, and they're number two in field goal percentage. And just having, you know, Miritich, that'll definitely oh, that impact was a, that big was time. A big, so I think they're going to take it. Move. It's going to be close that tonight. Was big, that was a big free agent. I'm move. taking the Bucks. What about I'm you? I'm taking the Bucks. I think Giannis is on another level right now. Mm-hmm. I, I, that's an interesting point you made about Kyrie. You think they're better without him? Yeah, I think they. I think the Celtics play better without him. They move the ball more there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, the real season starts tonight. Jason we Tatum, two great games. To Jason Tatum off. and Jalen Brown are more consistent when Kyrie's not there. And that also probably has to do with the fact that, you know, when Kyrie's on the court, Kyrie's trying to run the court because he's the veteran. You know what I mean? So maybe they don't get to shine as much if Kyrie's presence is there. And then maybe they have to take more responsibility when he's not there to ball out more. You yeah, know? definitely. You can see the impact in super, certain superstars when they're mm-hmm. not playing and they're playing. But how about that second game? You got Rockets and Lakers. You see what LeBron said today? He said zero dark... Uh, 30, yeah. 33 is activated. I'm yeah. like, LeBron, yeah. like full this guy yeah, exactly. a while ago. I was going to mention that before. You were playing with the Lakers. I was going to mention that before. <laughs> exactly. I'm Why fine. is he going to go, quote-unquote, full playoff mode now? It should have I mean, been you that. might miss the playoffs. It should have been, been that. I waited this long to it finally been activate this uh, 
We sound Lord? like we sound it's like Steve Ahey on LeBron it's, it's, right it's now. A Steve, I know. It's, it's a, well, you know what? He's, 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 this season he's, he's bringing it on himself. It. Yeah. It's a diva. He's bringing it upon himself. It's been ridiculous. It's diva this mode. And I'm a huge LeBron guy. When he was in the Cavs, I'm always rooting oh, yeah. for him. I think it's that Hollywood. The Hollywood, Hollywood gets think to you. This perception, you know. Once I in saw Hollywood, him, man. Once I saw him over the summer walking out in those Lakers shorts, I was like, oh man, this guy is. This is what he's gonna be this year. And yeah. he's he's been this guy. He's drinking wine on the bench. Like he could go oh, on and on. Yeah. Man. He needs to redeem yeah. himself. And he needs to find the, what made LeBron James great. That's true. It's the Hollywood, y'all. Y'all know when people get to Hollywood, they never the same. They change. They they. That's a fact. Hollywood, they in Hollywood, and guess what? They act <laughs> here's Hollywood. A, here's a scenario for you guys. The Lakers don't make the playoffs, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. The scenario. That's they don't make the playoffs, possible. It's possible. Right? It's a possible situation. They strike out this year in free agency. You're LeBron. You're going into next year pretty much with the same team <laughs> as last year. You missed the playoffs. You didn't get any um, marquee players. What's it looking like going into the next season? you got to start rethinking yourself and in terms of, did I, I make mean, the right move? Going I, feel like, right, exactly. I feel like that's where, if that scenario came up, that's where it could, you know, Maybe not destroy completely, but definitely put a bad name on LeBron's legacy. You it's know it's, I mean? it's starting to heat it's up a, a little more I feel each like that's a big time thing. as we end towards the end of the season. This situation, mm-hmm. it's not it's not that hot right now, but if pretend they make don't make the playoffs, look at Magic Johnson and what are you gonna say? Yeah. Right, right now they are in. The seat, race right? with you, the Kings. You missed that on AD. You couldn't bring him in. I mean, obviously, I think the Pelicans were ridiculous. No, they were being crazy. They Don't get me wrong. Crazy. I think Magic did all he could to potentially yeah. land. This, this man was willing to trade crazy. himself. I mean, exactly. when does pride come like, aside and finally say, "All right, listen, I'm getting all these picks. Yeah, I'm getting." All I mean, these I wouldn't do. I, I agree with deal. the Pelicans for not trading him. I, I really do. I would agree with it because at the end of the day, Boston <laughs> is where the assets is. Jason Tatum. I mean, Jason Taylor and Jalen Brown, to me, is better than that whole team because Lonzo Ball is a bust so far. Um, Brandon Ingram, there's signs. There's signs. Kuzma is the they, one they that can ball. Kuzma's been balling. Though, right? Kuzma yeah, is, is, yeah, of course. You always have to have yeah. Kuzma to deal with. He can ball. But my thing is, you never want to grant a player his wish. I don't I you, agree you, with you, you, know. you don't want to grant a player. And then the team that you're going to have to play in the rest of the conference. Oh, yeah. You don't want to, you don't want to do true. that. So trade him to Boston in the East. Get all the assets from Danny Ainge. Mm-hmm. I I agree with it, and, so, yeah. and the Lakers pick, pick is still going to be there. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's still going to be there. So, so you don't you don't want to even like pursue Anthony Davis's wishes at all. Exactly. You don't. It's, listen, it's my team. You want to exactly. leave? Fine. We'll you're you're you. pretty much exactly. putting us into a rebuild by you leaving. So I'm going to get back as much as I can. I'm going to do what I can to get this team possibly good for the future. I agree with you on that 100. Exactly. That's a good point. Exactly. So, um, the first game, y'all, y'all, y'all said the Bucks. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go with the Bucks to win this game, too. Um, a close game. I, I think it's going to be a shootout. I think the Celtics is going to come oh, yeah. out and try to make a point. It's gonna be back but I forward. think the Bucks is going to win this game Man, in a close game. It is about to heat up quick. It's going to be crazy. We're going to start getting the Sunday primetime games on ABC. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be nice. I'm excited. Right. I'm and it's so it. open, the Eastern it. Conference, as mentioned before. It is. It it's, is. That's going to be in, Ooh, that's like the most interesting thing in sports right now. It is. Because any... It's going to be a lot of game sixes and sevens. The I'm NBA took that. over the Super Bowl hype. <laughs> yeah, it really did. It really did. Considering the Super this, Bowl they was... Are this, last year's NFL draft, how big it was, that's this year's NBA free agency. Mm-hmm. Exactly. I agree. So to cap off the doubleheader on TNT, you got the Rockets at the Los Angeles mm-hmm. Lakers. We just talked a lot about LeBron James and the Lakers. Let's talk about the Rockets a little bit. Uh, we all know about James Harden, him boiling out the beam of this year. Probably his best year. In his career. And when you think about it, this brother has been runner up twice in the MVP, Mm -hmm. won it last year, and is the favorite to win it again this year. (laughs) Even though I think it's Giannis who who should win. You know, he made a good, strong push, Paul George. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's what we said. We were talking about that. He definitely did. Crazy this season. Wild. So, you know, with the the, the Rockets, Mm -hmm. obviously, their pieces are starting to come back. CP3 is starting to come back. Mm-hmm. Capella comes back tonight. Capella. Um, Eric big. Gordon is, is healthy now. He should be getting mm-hmm. healthy. Mm-hmm. Do you see this Rockets team being that same Rockets team from last year with James Harden bowling out like this? They pieces starting to come back. Or they are more <laughs> valuable threat to the Warriors than OKC is now? Because this is that same Rockets team. Obviously not fully healthy, but they probably will get healthy once the playoff comes around. Is this Rockets team better than OKC? Talk to me. I mean, honestly, we can't really say right now 
just because, like you said, Capella's coming back, Gordon coming back soon, and obviously CP3 and CP3 Harden. CP3 is so big to that team. You know, it, he oh, really yeah. is. Look and is. Look I feel like in the playoffs when he went down. That yeah. team was devastated. It almost looked like Harden. Was That's what I'm saying. Time's going to tell. I feel like within a couple weeks, if we see they're, they're on fire and they've all come together and everybody's back to health, I think they're a dangerous threat. Yeah, I need to see how they're gonna play down this exactly. stretch right here. I agree with you. Yeah. I, I think they're de- I think they're dangerous. Do you like stretch. them better than uh, OKC? I do, I do. And it, I know Russell Westbrook. Obviously, he's a triple double machine. I know Paul George is balling out the beam of this year. Mm-hmm. I know they got Stephen Adams on the board. Yeah. But OKC to me sometimes could be inconsistent. And the Rockets got that experience that no, they should have beat that's the true. Warriors last year, and they that didn't. Is true. The Rockets got that experience. CP3 got that experience. James Harden got that experience. Oh, Hopefully, yeah. James Harden shows up in the playoffs this year. And if they can do that, I believe the Rockets will be. Well, yeah, I think I agree with you. The question is, how long could Paul George and Russell Westbrook keep this up? I know until that's one true. of them has a bad game or one of them goes on a bad spell stretch, how long could they continue playing this well? Uh, look at the Rockets. I mean, they're mm-hmm. overall. I think they play better team ball than OKC. I yeah. think yeah. Harden is more of a factor than um, Paul George when they're both at their best. And I think CP3 plays a huge factor in facilitating all of it. We talked oh, about yeah. Capella coming back. I'm excited. I really think that Rockets. They have a good shot. They have a better shot this year than last year. And I think they have a better yeah. shot. But like you said, overall to beat the Warriors. You know, so what's interesting is that we all know about that famous brawl that the Rockets and the Lakers had mm. on prime time. It was Rondo, right? With Rondo, yeah, Brandon Ingram <laughs> losing his mind, just going out there <laughs> throwing punches. I don't know what's going on with him and James Harden. So this that's what makes me anxious with this game. I think both these games are spec- spectacular. What mm. a way to start off this real season of the NBA, the NBA right is here. killing it. They it's, they're killing it. <laughs> it's going to be big. And... You know, this is going to be a good game. I believe that, you know, the Rockets, obviously, they want to come up. The Lakers, obviously, want to make a statement. The Lakers, they can show up in big games. The Lakers are an average team. We saw Rondo in that Lakers-Celtics game. Yeah. Listen, when you got LeBron on your team, you oh, always yeah. have a shot. You always have a shot. I don't care, you know, who is on your... And he <laughs> posted his, his talent Instagram. is undeniable. You saw his Instagram post. I mean, yeah, is I mean, it will talk dirty? I we'll mean, see if he's pulling up to it. He might pull we'll up dirty. We'll see what happens tonight. We'll see what happens tonight, but I guess it's that time to make these predictions. Um, can you see who you got winning the second game? I'm taking the Rockets. I'm taking Harden, and now they got Capella back and CP3, the facilitator of the CP3. offense. I'm taking the Rockets. You know, feel like the Lakers still got to get their stuff together. They're the 10th seed right now. You know, is LeBron going to be on the playoff mode like he said he will be? We'll have to see. But, you know, like Anthony said, if you have LeBron in your team, you can never count them out. But I think the Rockets are taking it. They're red hot. I think this is LeBron's chance kicking off the second part of the season. This is your opportunity to pretty much change the course of the season. And I think I can't bet against LeBron. I just can't. <laughs> him at home. That's true. I like his matchup. I think the Rockets can give him a lot of trouble. But I ultimately, I think it's going to be a tight game. I think it's going to come down to the final shot. I think it's I'm gonna taking be a, the Lakers. I think it's going to be a tight game. But I... I got to agree with Kenny C on this one. I, I'm taking the Rockets to win this game. Um, I think James Harden is going to ball out as he's been doing for the last 40 games. It seemed like. maybe, maybe my LeBron mm-hmm. pride's getting in the way, but... <laughs> uh, this is the huddle, man. It is the huddle. Everybody's the huddle. title to your own opinion. Exactly. Anybody can win their own play in the huddle. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I got the Rockets winning this. I'm throwing an audible at you know what I'm saying? I, I feel you. You're throwing an audible out there. But I, I think the Rockets win this game in a close game. Um, against the Lakers, but ladies and gentlemen, the NBA season starts today. All right, it's getting down to the nitty gritty, and <laughs> we are going to have uh, these next couple of months till playoff time is going to be spectacular. If you're a basketball fan, this is your time of the year. And what can I say? Let's get it going. Let's get it going. Yes, sir. So we may have a new look show next week. Yeah, we might possibility. Possibility. A new, a new co-host, a new time on the airwaves, FM. The big, you know we might saying? have Anthony in here, yeah. Big Three. Yeah, Big Three. Be. Let's big go. Three might be coming. Coming. We talking about LeBron James. We, we got We're a talking free about agent. Katie and Kyrie. Exactly. Let's do our own <laughs> super team. I think Chris Bosh, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Kenny C, yeah, Anthony, right? and me, Real Lil. <laughs> let's go. Let's make this Big Three happen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's bring it to the airwaves. You heard it here on the huddle. Definitely. I'm pumped. Let's get it. See y'all next week, ladies and gentlemen. Have a good night.
Woo. Sure, boys.